TV Sound System, you know what it is, like, comment, share and subscribe. We are here again, another edition. I was thinking you know what's popping off right about now. We call it Behind the Boxes, where we just talk to sound systems, entertainers, music producers, and all those in the sound system culture, in the music industry, but we just take it away a little bit differently. I am in Hockley Social Club for the sound Sundays that they're doing right about now, and it's been a mad one. Look later on, they're going to show you what's been popping off. But I am here with one of Birmingham's finest. I don't know how to introduce this guy, you know, because Massive has been a long time in the making. I just got a message out the blue saying, so what? Interview I run? I says, yo, interviews running, man. So I want my general to introduce yourself to the people and to TV sound system right now. My name is Bonito Starr, singer, songwriter, producer. Been in the business for donkey's years. Um, next year makes 45 years I've been in the music business. And um, basically, I'm loving it as much as I ever did when I first started, you know, when I left school. Crazy. I want to say, yo, first of all, we, 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 didn't, we didn't even greet Papa. We didn't even greet Papa, you know. Greetings, Selector Hyde, man. People. Re this is the one brother. where a lot of people then was asking for, and I swear it's one of them ones there, but I have a list of people then who I want to interview, and you was on there, but the fact that you reached out to me and says, yo, boom, bam, let's get this popping, it's a, it's a good look. I want to really, we, this is one because we've got an event going on right about now. Um, I just want to have a brief one with you, and then we're definitely going to go and have another in-depth one, but for you, where did the whole music situation start for you? Where was your love of music? Where did that start from? Well, my music started from the age of, I'd say, eight or nine. Um, I was a great lover of music. My elder sister was one that used to buy all the little records and put them in the front room. And as you know, front room was a sacred place. Yeah. But on a Sunday when mommy make a mistake, I leave the front room open, you know, I was in there mm -hmm. and I loved the little records that she'd buy. She'd always have people like Dennis Brown, which is my favorite singer. Yeah. Um, Dennis Brown, Gregory Isaacs, Juno Delgado, mm -hmm. Slim Smith, but to name a few. Yeah. And I'd always, well, Dennis Brown was my favorite, so I'd always mimic Dennis Brown. You know what I mean? Because I love these songs. These just songs just yeah. resonated with me. And um, that's where my love grew from. Also, uh, Sunday was very, very um, influenced by religion. So, you know, anybody that come from a Caribbean family, mm. you know, say Sunday was church day. And I had to go to all, every Sunday was church. And whenever we'd have a convention, man, it was an all day thing. And it was wearing me down. <laughs> so... I decided, you know something, I'm going to join the choir, man, and give myself something to do. Okay. And from there, my love for music grew. And one of the time I hear one of the sisters say, but Mrs. Henry, Sister Henry, you sound so good, you know. Uh -huh. And that kind of just lit the flame for me. Yeah, and I said, you yeah, know yeah. something. Because at, at what age was you then? Around about what, around about what age was I'd that? I'd say I was about 11, 12. Okay. You know. So if we fast forward from 11 and then into like... Your teenage years. Yeah, man. Um, what, what, what's kind of crazy is right now is um, most of the time, around about that age, I'm talking to sound man. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. on the singing vibes of thing right yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. Um, why singing over Boy well, Noir, Ton Sound Man, and Bill Sound System and them? Why, what, what, what gravitated you to be more of an artist than more of a, like a sound system well, owner, etc.? Well, to be honest, you know, when I left school, you know, even though I had qualifications and stuff, yeah. um, there weren't much opportunities, you know what I mean? And um, it was very frustrating, you know, just signing on the dole and I wanted to give myself something to do. Yeah. So because of my love for music, I gravitated towards sound system, but I never wanted to be no box boy or no selector. <laughs> I wanted to have the mic in my hand, uh -huh. you know what I mean? To be honest, when I did start, I was a DJ. Okay. I used to DJ on yeah. sounds. Uh -huh. Which sound systems can, yeah, um, can you get a name drop of some sound systems right now? Go back to some sounds. Um, Stereo Classic. Uh -huh. I used to DJ on Raver Sound, Radix Sound, okay. Master Blaster, okay. Big Up Zuki, and the late Carpra Billy. When I'm a general, them, quoting at the business. Uh -huh. These guys, Observer, 
Okay. Observer asked me to come and join their sound as a singer. Master Blaster asked me to come and sing on their sound as well. Mm. You know what I mean? All these songs were, sounds were up and coming at the time. And um, I started DJing, but I found DJing was kind of a little frustrating because at the time, Saxon were the people that were happening. And there were so many DJs. There was General This, Captain That, <laughs> So and So Irie. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? To yeah. actually break into that. Mm. and be a name when you're hearing people like Philip Levy with my God McKing and Tipper yeah. Harry with the opposite big up Tipper uh -huh. um, man and I went home one day and said you know something let's try the singing yeah and see once I turned turn to the singing uh -huh. it turned a new page and for those people then who who don't know Bonita Star and know the levels because we're going to go back and forth a little bit still yeah um, when it came to Arcane and bam I'm going to be a singer what what did you have to kind of like plan and think about okay i'm singing but what am i singing about and for the people them who who don't know you what we, how would you describe your singing style and what genre of singing what message are you putting out when you are singing well when i first started singing it was a dancehall vibe in it yeah you know what i mean i used to listen to all the greats at the time you'd have you know all of the great singers from jamaica uh -huh. you get me um i can't really Put the names to my head at the moment, but um, for all the dancehall cassette, them I used to love Poddy Roots yeah. and Kilimanjaro. Okay, you know what I mean. He was one of my favorites. I think it was one of his songs I stole first. Yeah, and then from then I felt a little embarrassed. I said, you know something, I was in top class at school. I must be able to write, so I started writing my own songs. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, I noticed that people gravitate to it. You know okay. what I mean. So. I never really modeled myself up nobody as such. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But I'd, li I'd buy all the cassettes. Yeah. I used to buy Gemini. I used to love Gemini sound. You know what I mean? I love, used to love Metro Media. Yeah. I love anything that was current them times. Virgo sound, mm -hmm. all the great sounds. I'd listen to their singers and compare myself to them and say, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Until I, I found my own little niche. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I'd step out. Obviously, just like Sanchez and the, the Grits, we all started with cover versions. Yeah. Oh, so they were, like, yeah. you know, yeah. I used to sing cover versions mm -hmm. and that's how I used to get my little accolade. You know what I mean? And it was nice and obviously it was attracting, attracting the women. So, <laughs> you know. It was all good. I wasn't getting paid, but any little dance, carnival, you name it. For me, you know, and my name was getting around, so when yeah. I'd step to a sound and say, yo, baby, I want to sing, they'd never say no, because, yeah, man, we hear about yeah, him. Yeah, about Go on you. my youth, and you. you see, in those days, you couldn't, you couldn't secular yourself, yourself. Any rhythm would come. Like a DJ, you had to be ready. Yeah. You know, I'm not a man to go on rhythms that don't suit me, so I came up through the old school, Studio One. Yeah. Studio One was my teacher. If I can handle Studio One, I can handle anything. Mm -hmm. And that's how I molded my craft. And I'd now being 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 able to to sing like that, because you you, you you pointed on so many different things there. Mm. Where I says like, okay, then cool. Um, like you says, uh, coming out as a singer, cover songs was the easiest option. Yes. You know what I mean? When did you when did you decide that to say you know what? I need to start writing my own songs. And how hard was it to you to put pen to paper to actually write songs? Well, to be honest, you know, it was no, it was no easy task. But yeah. being a well-educated youth from school, I just applied myself to my craft. I'd spend all night, if yeah. necessary, to get a good song. And I won't lie to you, back in those days, a good song would take me six months. Wow. Maybe the dance old songs you could just fling them together, but <laughs> the real quality songs took yeah. six months. Now I can write a song in ten minutes. Wow, wow, wow. And I don't use no pen and paper either. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well let's fast forward hit songs. Cause let's not go on like say you ain't got no hit songs on well, the your belt. Yeah man. Give us some of the songs and what you especially the songs that you're you, that you're really passionate about, songs that you took time out to write and did so well and got such a good response from the massives. Well I won't lie, my first my first hit tune was on the now generation level okay. for Stafford Douglas and I was introduced him to him by um, Floxy from Scientist Sound. Uh -huh. He had um, a cut of the sweet reggae music 
um, track that was doing well for Nitty Gritty at the time. Yeah. And he was looking a couple of artists to come and voice it. So he asked me to come over to the studio because obviously I was a budding singer at the time on Sound Systems. Mm -hmm. And my name was getting around and he reached out to me and I said, what? I said, yeah, mommy, take it on, yes. And um, I went over to the studio, which was Silicon Squad. It was owned by Paul Horton. And um, he paid me the track and I said, yeah, man. And when I heard the track, I heard, come by me, love. So I said, yeah, got the cassette, learned the lyrics, went over there, one take, and I took it to <laughs> Stafford, and that was, the, that was the beginning. Yeah. He released that in March 1986, of which I did three tracks on that, on that label. I did Can't Buy Me Love, yeah. um, Join the Posse, because mm. by then I had loads of girls around me, and there was a posse of girls from West Bromwich. Okay. Anyway, Bonito Star sing. You know, they'd be in front of the sound cheering for me. Wow. So, you know. Big up Murphy and the whole of the crew mm -hmm. from West Bromwich, yeah man. <laughs> you know, and um, I wrote the song about them, join the posse. And then I met a girl from um, Gloucester and obviously to cut a long story short, mm -hmm. I influenced her and she said, it's like you're electric, man. <laughs> so I wrote a song because she says I'm electric. Yeah. And those three tunes charted for me. Oh wow. And that's what made me a household name yeah. in UK reggae. Uh -huh. I mean, coming from the UK, I think I was one of the only artists that really, I mean, apart from singers like Jacko Melody, yeah. I mean, even singers like Peter Spence. Mm -hmm. I've been singing before Peter Spence. Yeah. I mean, Peter Spence came to me and said, I inspired him. Mm -hmm. Considering I believe he's one of the top strikers right now in UK Lovers Rock. Yeah, definitely. I found that kind of hard to believe, but, mm. you know, it did stroke my ego. And, you know what I mean? I'm very determined. I, I'm, I, I'm an Aries. I'm born in April. Mm -hmm. And I believe in being steadfast and true to your craft. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I've never looked back. You know what I mean? I've just kept plying myself to my trade yeah. and it's taken me abroad, it's taken me to Canada, mm -hmm. it's taken me to Europe, it's taken me to America and I'm... I'm and what is, what is it like coming from Birmingham, writing some good songs, not really thinking it's going to get to where it goes, it does get to where it goes, next thing you know you're on a plane, Canada, plane, Europe and then you go into these places and you're seeing people them embrace you like a household name that you deserve to be. What's it like? Well, I'm going to give you the bigger joke than that, bro. They had a, um, I'm sure they had, a, they had a promoter from Wolverhampton mm -hmm. called Albert. I don't know if you remember him. I don't know. I will find out who Albert but is. Albert used to come down from Wolverhampton uh -huh. when I did Calm By Me Love and he used to book me. Okay. And never mind going abroad. I couldn't believe that Wolverhampton was only up the road. <laughs> <laughs> and when I get a booking and I come up there and I'd walk in the place yeah. and see how the place ran wow. for Bonito Star, I used to have to go back to the front door and I would look at the poster again and go, wow, I really mean people. Wolverhampton was one of my biggest supporters, so wow. I have to big up the Wolverhampton crew for all the people that remember Bonito Star, respect because you are one of the catalysts that make me still do what I do now because you always, Wolverhampton always gave me my ratings. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. I can tell you that from the heart. Wolverhampton was always one of my stomping grounds. Whenever Albert would call me and say, boy, come from Henry's nightclub, yeah. the crypt. Uh -huh. I don't remember too much other venues, but whenever I'd come to Wolverhampton, man, Wolverhampton, it was a vibe. It was a vibe. man. Wow, I that's know. crazy, man. Coming from, coming from Wolverhampton, I know Wolverhampton people are going to, Super appreciate that. Nah, Let's well talk um, 2024. Okay. Because it's going to be a crazy, there's so many things going on. 2024, yeah, yeah. the current moment and the phase where you are right now. Bonito Star, are you happy with your career of, of, of where it is right now and what you well, will be doing to make it um, push forward? At the moment, I am, I'm now a singer, songwriter, producer. Mm -hmm. I've taken myself to the stage where I think that I need to put back a little back of what I was given. Yeah. So I created a label in 1993. Okay. And I always had confidence in it, but it never really took off until I think I'd say um, 2020, late 2021, 2022. Yeah. Where I, um, I, I started working with another singer, great singer, Peter Culture, and we combined our talents and 
we started producing songs on my label Aries Music Lab. Yeah. Um, since them times we've had, I'd say seven, eight viral number ones. I had Ooh. my first reggae number one. Yeah. After 40 years in the business, of which I can say, I can proudly say, yeah, man. Well deserved. Wow, definitely. And that a song called, it's a song called Rose Garden. Uh -huh. I didn't expect it to gravitate the way it did, but when London reached out to me and said, yo, we're, we're, we're making your song number one for this period of time, I was like, wow. Uh -huh. I think that was late 2021 going 2022. And from then, I haven't looked back. That's crazy, man. Um, That's crazy. I've had number ones with Peter Spence. Yep. I've had number ones with Robbie Levi, Celia Heavenly, um, Unruly. Because it's not just a one-man thing. I've got. I've had numerous artists yeah. on my label, and I'm proud of what I've achieved. Mm. I think I've built a legacy that, in time, will be recognised as coming from not or Badlands, or yeah. Birmingham, wherever you want to refer <laughs> it as. You know, if them talk about Birmingham, they have to talk about Bonita Star. Yeah, man, 100%, you know man. I mean? they, have to, they have to, man. They have I am to. one of the most authentic down south singers to come out of the 80s. Mm. There is no other. Nobody Crazy. comes beside me, below me. There was no other singer. You know yeah. what I mean? And I've kept my torch burning till now. And I, I know mommy proud of me. <laughs> so the future 2025 i mean like it's 20 it's like october now you might as well say the year's done uh what can we look forward to for 2025 and beyond well, uh, i'm keeping up my productions i do have um other little things that i do i do have a, i do from time to time do a reggae tribute uh -huh. of the greats of all the greats from our time ub40 john holt uh -huh. johnny nash third world just basically paying a homage to all the people that have kept reggae alive yeah. over the last 30 years uh -huh. and i love it i love interacting with the crowds and you know what i mean and in so doing i can bring the energy back to the aries music lab and create other energies yeah so there's many strings to my bow uh -huh. you know what i mean i write songs for other people also you know there are a couple of songs that are on my label that was written by me mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's brought out talents in me that I, I, I didn't know I really had. But, you know, as far as music's concerned, tell the world some music. I'm a first girl, that. <laughs> and for anybody that's out there, if you come to me, you know you're going to have to share that position with music. Because she's never left me. And she's always gave me what I've given her. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's all so, about the music. All about yeah, the music. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man, man, I'll tell you something. It's such a good joy to just link up with you right now. Like how you just says about Wolverhampton, my my brain's ticking now to figure out how we're gonna get Bonito no, well, Star back inside the city of Wolverhampton and and bless the people then with your voice. So we're, we're gonna have to make that one happen. Well, I'll be honest with you. I have a big up bullet movement. Yeah, man, definitely. Because he came to me when we was having a wake for Corporal Billy, and him saying I'm only coming up for two reasons: for show sure respect to Billy and to find a great bonito star yeah <laughs> and i can tell you now for the last year or so we've been making some great moves wow big yeah. up dj bullet and rabski yeah man and yeah, them man. man they come and give me the props mm -hmm. and has given me the same energy that wolverhampton originally how That's strange good, it is man. yeah first it was wolverhampton you know what well, you know what bullet tell me say him and him brother used to put dinner money together just to buy my tunes. Wow. Yo, I went to that. I tune. went with that. The first record I ever bought was Dennis Brown, Africa We Want Figo. Mm. And I went without my dinner money for that too. Mm -hmm. So with that familiarity, yo. You know where it is. Yeah, yes, man. Shall man. I reach out to Bullet Movements? Yes, man. Talk of Wednesday's family. Bullet Robski, definitely, man. So, yeah, man. Bonito, before we're out of here, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out. No, man. Can honor, you give man. me your top five artists of all time well it has to be first and foremost dennis emmanuel brown yep um slim smith okay juna delgado uh-huh up coming back up to modern time yeah um beris hammond all right and 
Mikey Spice. Wow, that is a hot yo. That, that, that is a hard five, you know. That's a hard five there. I like that five well, there, you know. Let me say this. I am a culmination. If I was to define my vocal skills, uh-huh. it would be a combination of Slim Smith, Dennis Brown, and Junior Legado. Okay. You know? And why, why, why did you put Mikey Spice on there? Because Mikey Spice is one of my favorite artists of all time. Well, he, Mikey he's, Spice, he's up there. he has the flavor. Mm. And for me, it's all about the f- lyrics and flavor. Uh-huh. You know? And I like to appeal to a more, now I'm older, a more mature crowd that are grounded and have a reminiscent from those days until now. Yeah. And 45 years of music is a lot of music to ac- accumulate in one brain. Well, there it is, Massive. TV Sound System, Selector Hype Live and Direct with the one and only Benito Star. Right now, even though I'm talking in my head right now, I'm saying, all right, Bullets, we have to come together now and get Benito Star live and big direct back Hype in Wolverhampton. So, anybody want to pick up before you're out? On those big up all the people who know me, you get me? Big up God Almighty, car, he make all things possible. You understand me? And keep listening out for Bonita Star, car. Like them say, we're not done. We just are come. Like I said, massive like, comment, share, and subscribe. Behind the boxes with TV Sound System, Bonita Star, thank you so much. Respect, we're out, I, one. Man. Peace. Respect, man. Bless, bless.